guys. How are you doing? Uh, let's, all, let's all stand up. Everyone get up. You guys have been sitting for about an hour and a half or two hours. All right, and find someone you don't know and give them the best hug you've had in the last couple days. <laughs> hey, you're not hugging. Let's get this. All right, all right, that's enough hugging. You, you, you guys can find each other on Coffee Meets Bagel if it was. Uh... All right, um, so I'm going to talk to you guys about our company, how we started, um, how we've messed up an incredible amount, and then kind of what we're building. This is a picture of me drinking a gin and tonic. I don't know why it's on there, but it, it was a, it, that was an awesome wedding. All right, so... Um, so, uh, raise your hand if you've ever broken a smartphone before. All right, so that's, it's a pretty big market. Um, so, we, so, I'm one of our own best customers. I went to Cal Poly with my brother, Chip, who presented last year. Raise your hand if you were here last year. Oh, come on. All right, well, his talk sucked, and mine's going to be way better. <laughs> All right, uh, so, he's a, so he's a winemaker, but what happened is in college, we got cut off by our parents. And they're like, hey, you guys need to um, figure out a way to make money. So we started a beekeeping operation because the uh, margins in honey are actually pretty high. And then, um, and then so he started, we started making wine because we couldn't afford alcohol. So we're like, why don't we make it? And, um, and then I kept breaking my phone. And I'm like, we're spending all the money that we're making from selling wine to kids in the dorms on fixing our phones. So we need to, we need to figure out how to... Um, how to make some more money and, and not pay Apple $229 to fix an iPhone 3GS. So uh, on the fifth or sixth time breaking my phone, I ended up uh, ordering, the, ordering some parts online and then uh, took about four hours to fix. I broke the phone more than it was broken before taking it apart, but um, at least I didn't have to go wait in line, set up an appointment and have a painful experience. And then my roommate was like, hey, can you fix my phone? It broke. And I'm like, yeah, I'll order another $15 part and then fix it. I didn't charge him, but I should have. Um, and so I was like, this is a really cool business, but um, I don't have any customers. I'm just fixing my buddy's phones that uh, go to parties. <laughs> and, um, and so I ended up going to a career fair, and I was walking around, and I paid $20 to buy 10 sheets of paper to print my resume on that read like, it was like high school education. There was like nothing I'd done. I worked at a couple fish stores. That was really fun. And, uh, and actually I worked at fish stores because I've always kept saltwater fish tanks and corals were really expensive and I got an employee discount and I worked for $5 an hour and I got corals for next to nothing. So that was cool. But, um, and <laughs> this is actually gonna be, a, this, is, this story gets better. So, <laughs> Um, so I'm walking around, and, I'm, and I remember looking at a Clorox, uh, Clorox booth there at a career fair at Cal Poly, and I remember thinking, like, I'm going to spend a summer working on, like, marketing or social media for Clorox. It's probably not the best use of my time, and I end up bumping into um, one of my friends who actually just started a company that went through YC, which is awesome. But I bump into a, uh, a guy, and he's like, hey, you're the guy who fixes iPhones. I'm like, yeah, what's going on? He's like, can you fix, I broke my phone yesterday, can you fix it? And so I was like, yeah, actually, I have, uh, I have parts in my golf cart, because I had a golf cart in college, and I drove it to and from class. Um, <laughs> we're, we're <laughs> so uh, there's another story about how we acquired the golf cart, which find me after, and I'll tell you. It, <laughs> we painted it, so you can never guess that it was someone else's golf cart. Um, <laughs> So I end up, I was like, yeah, I, I can fix your phone. And I ended up throwing out all my resumes uh, before I'd handed out any one of them went and fixed his phone. And then I was like, hey, this could be a cool business. So I'm going to need to figure out how to, um, how to make more customers. So I, I actually skipped class and I went to the library and got on uh, Microsoft Paint, for those that remember it, and made the most terrible looking flyer you've ever seen that's like broken iPhone. Uh, and I made it in neon colors. Um, and then the cool thing about Cal Poly, I hope they never watch this, but they subsidize color printing at five cents each. So it's, it's very cheap. And so I, I printed um, two or 300 flyers and then handed them to my friends and my roommates. And I was like, when you're going to class, hang these up. And on the first day, I got a phone call being like, hey, can you, uh, this is actually, a, there's, there's a funny story behind this. So um, I dated 
two girls named Courtney. And um, <laughs> it gets good. So I dated two girls, not at the same time. But, um, but so I dated two girls named Courtney. And the first person that called me was like, hey, I broke my phone. I saw your flyer. Can you fix it? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. What type? She's like, I have a iPhone 3GS. And I'm like, all right, that's awesome. What's, what's your name? And she's like, my name's Courtney. And I'm like, this is a sign. This is, uh, this is awesome. And so uh, I gave her my address. And I said, hey, uh, yeah, bring it over. I'll, I'll fix it later. And she walks in, and she's like, hey, I think I've been to your house before. And I'm like, I don't think you have. And, and she's like, no, uh, Mike lives here. I'm like, yeah, Mike's my roommate. She's like, oh, my brother's best friends with Mike. Uh, his name's Anthony. And I was like, Anthony Martin? She's like, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm good buddies with him. And that actually became my co-founder. Is Let's give a round of applause for Anthony and his sister. So, uh, so that was our first, my first customer was uh, my co-founder sister, which was, uh, which was crazy. And so I ended up hanging, the coolest thing about flyers is you can hang them anywhere and there's, and if you staple them high enough in the room, the janitorial staff or the teachers can't tear them down. So we'd go, we'd like go in at night or after 6 p.m. and then like staple flyers up towards the clock where it was like 10, 12 feet high and they'd never get torn down, but every time when you're in class, you'd look at it, and you'd be like, oh my gosh, I have two hours left, and there's an annoying neon flyer next to the clock that's telling me to fix my iPhone. And, um, and so we ended up graduating and uh, was thinking about dropping out. I still don't know if that was a good idea or a bad idea. I think the jury's still out on that. Uh, but ended up, like, the more uh, customers I would meet and service, the less important education in school got. And... And I was like, well, I'm a psychology major. I can probably, um, I can probably get by with uh, graduating. So ended up um, graduating, and, the, and I was talking to my dad, and I'm like, hey, what are you? He's like, what are you doing after graduation? And I'm, and I'm like, I don't, I don't really have a plan. I, I, like, I think uh, I cracked is going pretty well. And he was like, well, why don't you do that full time? And I remember thinking that it had never, it had always been just like a really cool college job. It had never been... Uh, something bigger than that. And I think one of the coolest things a parent can give to their children is um, permission to explore, adventure, um, and like go out on their own. And so, uh, and uh, like uh, something switched in my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just got permission to essentially max out my credit cards and start an iPhone repair company, which sounded crazy at the time. And so um, Anthony ended up calling me and he's like, hey, what are you doing for, um, what are you doing for, uh, money and I'm like, you need to fix phones, and he's like, all right, cool. He he was running a uh, textbook rental and exchange company, and um, and so I just sent him the flyers. We changed his phone number on it, and I sent him like a YouTube video on how to fix uh, iPhones. And there's actually still a flyer somewhere on Santa Barbara's campus that he gets a call like every two weeks, and someone's like, hey, do you fix phones? And he's like, where is that flyer? <laughs> <laughs> And they're like, oh, it's in the poli sci building. And then we're like, tear it down. And they're like, it's way too high. <laughs> um, and, and so, so that, it, he's, it, was, it became like the absolute coolest, uh, coolest job I could imagine. And after graduation, we're like, well, we need, well, I'll, do, I'll go back to a chip story. We can integrate those quite a lot. He's my winemaking brother. So he calls me and he's like, hey, what are you doing for money? I'm like, you need to fix phones. And he's like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll just print it on my business card. That I, is it cool if I say I'm an executive? I'm like, yeah, of course. We have three people in the company. You can be an executive. So he, <laughs> he, he prints like business cards that say like winemaker and uh, I cracked executive on it. And, um, and I send him up some screens and he goes to a party and he's trying to impress a cute girl. And, uh, and he hits her phone out of her hand uh, to break it, because he's like, oh, I can fix this. And so, um, so, <laughs> so he, hits, he hits the phone out, and, um, and she's like, you're an asshole, it's a 3GS. And he's like, I only have 3G parts, if you remember, there's two iPods. <laughs> so he calls me in a panic, I'm like, oh yeah, they're, you, we definitely don't have parts for those. And he ended up having to buy her a new phone, which was... Uh, <laughs> um, and so... So that's, so it started, but it was like what worked on one campus, started working on another campus, started working in San Francisco. And, 
and what it started as I put on demand iPhone repair. I think what we'll get to is it's actually not about repair at all. It's not even about iPhones. It's about uh, building a network that you press a button anywhere you are around the world and someone comes and solves your technology needs. But uh, it started as on-demand phone repair. And uh, the cool thing is, is we believe that your iPhone is actually the remote control to your life. And if you can insert a brand and a service in between you and that phone, you, well, you can get into other verticals quite easily because you've already gained consumer trust and, um, and you've already solved their deepest need, which is connection, connection to the world. And so what, what we decided is like, how do we create the AAA for your devices? And, and the cool thing is, is we think that repair is a Trojan horse into um, our consumers' lives, and it's, uh, it's going crazy. I think I have like 20 slides, and I'm on slide two, so this is going to be good. Uh, <laughs> here's a picture that uh, I don't know why it's on there. We can go to the next one. <laughs> cool. So how it started, I was my own customer. I still am. I fixed my iPhone 6 for the fourth time this year, um, yesterday, actually. And I don't like it because the six parts are actually expensive, so it costs us a lot of money to fix it, but whatever. So uh, where we are now, uh, so we're at about 115 employees. We have six offices, which is insane because uh, at graduation day, we packed my uh, co-founder's truck and we're like, hey, let's go up to San Francisco. There's no way we can build a massive company in San Luis Obispo and ended up driving up and crashing on my brother's couch, another chip story. Um, so he, <laughs> winemakers are the best. So he, I'm, I'm working with Anthony and we're at our computers and it's like 9.40 a.m. on a Tuesday. And Chip like comes out and we've been living on his couch for two months and he's like stretching, probably hung over and he's like, ah, oh, how much do you guys work? <laughs> we're, we're like, Chip, it's 9.40 in the morning, you need to get up. And, but so what, we were like, hey, it's our time to leave. So we end up, uh, Craig's listing a place in Sunnyvale and moving into a basement in Sunnyvale. And then ended up hiring a graphic designer. Uh, her name's Leslie. She, she saw my MS Paint flyers and she's like, these are terrible. Can I make you uh, better ones? Because I have to look at them all day in class. And I'm like, this is annoying. I'm like, oh my gosh, absolutely. And then uh, I, we, I paid people in $2 bills. That's a life hack, pay people in $2 bills. People love $2 bills. Um, <laughs> And so the whole idea is like, how do you, how do you, uh, how do you scale? Well, it was working in these three cities. How do we do that? Uh, how do we do that around the U.S.? And and we came up with this model that we call the iTech model, where we have, um, well, just some numbers. So in the last 30 days, we've had about 10,000 people apply to be an iTech. We say no to 97 to 98 percent of them, uh, either based on like where they are, skill, do they fit our model. Are they uh, going to treat our customers better than any, um, any person than the other 98%? And so we take the top 2% of people that apply to be an iTech and we try to equip them with all the tools they need to be successful. So this is supply chain, marketing material, training, backend support, regional management, but most importantly, a brand and customers. And so we built a, um, we built a, a dispatch platform where anywhere you are around the US, you can put in the problem you're having and it goes to your local iTech, they can claim it, then they'll meet you at wherever's convenient for you, so they're all mobile. And, um, and Starbucks is actually a huge place that iTechs love to service customers, because a lot of people don't understand that you can, uh, you can, I can drop my phone right now, break it, and in the next 20 minutes have someone here and uh, replace it good as new. And so uh, we've, we have, we just passed 2,300 iTechs in the company and, um, and they are just the most incredible service professionals you've ever met. Um, your, our average iTech is between 30 to 40 years old. Uh, he or she has a family. They're not what we thought college students would be the way to expand. It, it's not college students. And uh, we're planning on adding about 5,000 more people to the company this year, which is insane because five years ago we were living in a basement trying to fix phones. So it started by word of mouth, um, became a cool college job. Don't know why that picture's there. Um, <laughs> so becoming bigger, like how do you scale something bigger than just something that's out of a dorm room? And that's, that's, been, the, um, that's been the question we're trying to answer because it, one of my biggest fears is we won't build a big enough company that makes an impact on how massive this market is. So in 2009, about 5% of the world's population had smartphones. At the end of this year, it should be about 
Um, Apple sold 74 million iPhones last quarter. It's about 34,000 iPhones every hour, 24 hours a day. We, we know that this market is absolutely huge. Well, what else can you do besides repair? And that is you can, you can buy back old devices, you can deliver new devices. And then the Golden Goose is actually a membership plan where it, for $7 a month, anytime you break your device, whether it's an Android, iPad, whatever, uh, you press a button and we fix it for $25 uh, on the spot, which is insane. So uh, become a master of your own domain. A lot of people ask us, hey, why didn't you, um, why don't you fix this? Uh, we have a, someone who joined our company that the first call they got was someone trying to fix their TomTom -tom GPS unit. <laughs> and he's like, why don't we fix TomToms? And it's like, ah, well, we actually think we can be the best in the world at iOS and Android repair, and then we can move into other verticals. And it's been an insane uh, uphill battle. So the, one of the things, I'll give you a fish analogy, because you guys know I worked at a fish store. Um, so when expanding, cast a really big net and throw back what you don't want. Uh, we believe this for all the tests we do internally. It's, hey, let's see what works, and then let's get rid of stuff that doesn't work, and then let's keep what does. But let's keep everything on the table as a possibility until it's not a possibility. And that's been, um, that's been crazy. I put slow growth on here because um, growing fast is actually not always the best thing. So we, we, were, we, we try to grow at about 10 to 15% month over month, um, which by certain standards is either really fast or really slow, but it, it took us three years to get to a point where we're actually comfortable growing at 15% a month. So don't, great businesses take time. Don't expect to come out with an app or a website or a uh, platform and have like crazy adoption unless you're Meerkat or Periscope, which was sweet in South by Southwest. You guys all need to go next year. Uh, one, of the <laughs> one of the things that we also live by is shoot bullets, not cannonball, or shoot bullets, then cannonballs, um, in that you, want to, uh, you don't want to spend too much resources on something that doesn't work. So if you're going to change your entire website layout and then you launch your website, and it doesn't work, well, you just spent six months pushing something that, uh, that actually has less KPIs. Well, you could have just hacked something together, moved fast. Uh, I'm not an engineer. My co-founder's not an engineer. Hug your engineers if you have one or you have a technical co-founder there. They make the world a better place and are absolutely amazing. Can we get a round of applause for, I think, all engineers just in general? Because we are, we are all, uh, if we're at this conference, chances are we are not engineers. So, <laughs> so I put A-B testing uh, is your best friend for life. So test everything. Uh, analytics, you get better at your job by analytics and, and knowing what does and doesn't work. Uh, there's a lot of really cool A-B testing platforms where, like, minute changes. So we cha there's a button on our site that is the button that is the difference between requesting an iTech and not requesting an iTech. And we changed it from request a tech to get quote. And it increased conversions by 3.5%. That's insane. And so test everything. Um, and if it doesn't work, then it's, it took a couple hours to make it work. How do we scale? This is just A-B testing. So we run about 25 web tests a month. Which, what I think is really interesting is right now, the, so the, we get a... A uh, couple million people to our website a quarter, but right now uh, half of them don't know that they're getting a completely different homepage than the other half. And that's, that's insane because they're going to have a good experience, but they don't know that we're actually running a control on a new uh, web page right now. So, and then always think bigger. One of my favorite things is when I'm, when I'm talking to people, uh, whether it's investors or specifically other entrepreneurs, and other CEOs, one of my favorite things is when they actually have a bigger vision for a branch of our company than I do myself. And it, and it gives me the chills to think about when someone says, last week, someone goes, oh, you're, you're building the, last, the world's last technical uh, workforce. And I've never thought of it like that. And we're going to add probably 20,000 people t as high techs to our company in the next, next 18 months. And it, we literally could be building the world's last technical workforce um, and that, I, I love the thought of people thinking bigger than yourself. I think founders generally, they get so in the, they get so in the weeds and they, they're looking at such a micro level, they, they can forget the macro level. I, I think Walker at Teespring earlier, he's, a, he's an absolutely great guy, but it, it, seems, um, 
it's crazy to, if you think about, well, what happens if you can actually put a T-shirt on uh, 5%, 10%, 20% of the world's population? It's, it's, it's massive, and, and it seems silly if you don't go back and, um, and just think big always about what you're doing. And then make decisions that you would make when you're larger. Um, one of the, so one of the things that I do personally is, um, is I think it, it, five years from now, if I'm looking back at this decision, would I have made the same decision? And that's, I, every day I try to get better at my job. I hope everyone on our team tries to do that as well. I, I wanna go to sleep and when I wake up, I wanna be a better founder than I was when I went to bed the night before. And I always try to look back and uh, look back at my decisions and like, would I have made that decision now? Whether it's hiring your best friend, which uh, the jury's still out on it. I've unfortunately had to let some of my best friends go that, that didn't work out, but it's still, I needed to go through that uh, growth curve to learn that maybe it's not the best idea to hire your best friend, but when it does work, it is your, the best idea. So um, decisions are, make decisions that you'd make when you're a billion dollar company that you would when you're a three person startup in a basement in Sunnyvale. So this is a cool, uh, this is a cool map. So every blue pin is someone that requested an iTech in the last 60 days in places we don't have iTechs yet. Uh, the purple pins are current locations of iTechs. They kind of get covered up. And then uh, the left is quarter over quarter iTech growth. So we're, we're going to add 5,000 iTechs this year. This is uh, a cool thing. So one of the things that we live by is how do we make our customers and our users champions? Um, our iTechs will do probably about $30 million in just repair, trade-in, and, um, and uh, protection plans of the $25. They show up, they fix your device. Um, that's insane. I love that we're building a network that we can take care of uh, our customers and then everyone wins. This is, uh, this is actually a fun one. So uh, one of the things people uh, always ask us is like, hey, have you guys thought of doing this? And I'm like, I don't want to spend time and resources validating a completely new vertical. I'd actually rather have a uh, big, slow corporation spend $50 million on something that does or doesn't work and then I want to study them so closely. So I want to talk to uh, current employees. I want to talk to former employees. I want to talk to uh, the media and press that like release stories on it. I really think that you one of the, like, a hack is that you let other people spend their money and then you see what works. If it validates, then freaking charge ahead on it. And if it doesn't work, then you're like, maybe I should do something different. Uh, hire for strength, not lack of weakness. That's a shout out to Mr. Ben Horowitz in one of his blog posts. And that took a long time to um, that look, uh, took a long time to learn because when you're interviewing people for your team and for your company and your culture, you're like, oh my gosh, they're so amazing at this. Yeah, well, they suck at this, and it's like, well, what is their role? And if if they're amazing at what they're actually doing, well, you can actually make trade-offs for that person. And so, don't think that you want like an all-around uh, excellent person. I'd hire for people in specific domains and verticals, and then make them champions in that. Uh, out innovate the things that kill you. So a lot of a lot of times it's like, what are you going to do when uh, Sapphire Glass comes out? And we're like, we <laughs> we will probably fix Sapphire Glass because it breaks. But um, yes, it does. <laughs> um, <laughs> you guys see that call out right there? Um, so uh, just out innovate things that is gonna that is gonna put you out of business. What keeps me up at night is like, what can what can kill us as a company tomorrow? And then how can we actually beat it? And whether it's having a, um, a contingency plan to pivot or a, actually we're gonna blow out this vertical if this vertical gets shut off. And then you also don't necessarily need to know what you wanna be when you start out. You'll kind of evolve, evolve into that. This is the future. That's a really good picture of our team. Uh, we have these smart cars. Raise your hand if you've ever seen a smart car in SF, a little eye cracked car. Oh man, we need more of them. So we have a couple hundred around the US right now. Um, they're cruising around. So the, the future is not actually about uh, fixing a broken Android tablet. The future is about what can you do when you're in your customer's home. And, um, and we think that there's going to be a day where we, well, we actually think that as, as new technology comes on the market, your life actually gets more inherently complex. So your, um, your Nest thermostat, it takes up mental bandwidth when what you had was a mercury tube that just completed a circuit when um, temperatures changed. It, it makes your life easier, but it actually adds like mental complexity. Your Apple Watch that came out today um, is actually more, makes your life more complex than your previous watch, if, or if you didn't have one, um, your feature phone was actually easier to use than your iPhone. 
And so our thing is, is how do you, how does our network actually take away and remove all that complexity? And if, if you can put someone in every city worldwide that, uh, that needs to press a button and solve their, I'm going to turn off the, uh, this little timer. We'll just talk for another 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> Um, so we, we want to build the network that solves all of our customers' problems at the click of a button so that you come home and, and you're like, oh my gosh, my router doesn't work, or my Nest thermostat's off, or my drop cam, I don't know how to set it up. You literally click your iTech button or your iCracked button, and we show up and solve your problems for you on the spot. That's going to be very exciting. Uh, email me directly, aj.icrack.com. I get enough spam, so now my email's out there for everyone. <laughs> Uh, and then also, if you're one of, one of our favorite types of people to hire, like my favorite type of person to join, add up to our team are former founders and former CEOs and people who have started stuff and, and have ambition. I look at um, if someone says, hey, I'd love to come work for you guys for, uh, for a year, and then I want to start my own thing. It's like, oh, my gosh, come in. Like, learn as much as you can, add value, and, and, um, and hopefully you'll leave a better person. Every, every job that you have, you should leave that job a better person or like more skilled than before. Always trying to make upward movements. And then I have, uh, email me if you're with, here with your boss. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I'll, we'll, we'll go into q and I'm, I'm pretty honest with questions, so if you guys wanna ask um, tough questions or weird questions, I can probably answer them. My man. For sure. Um, do you use independent contractors for your, uh, your techs? And what, how, do you, like, how do you plan to maintain the volume you have now as you have far more this year than what you have Yeah, it, absolutely. So the, the question is, how do you maintain quality as you grow, add, uh, add individuals to your company? Um, that's a great question. I think w as we've gotten, as, as we're actually growing, we're getting more applicants. So the percentage that we're accepting is decreasing. But what it, what it comes down to is when you're looking at on-demand economy um, companies, you're looking at, our goal is we want our iTechs to make 30 to $50 an hour. And, the, and we look at there's actually three tiers of on-demand economy. So there's your, your Uber, your Instacart, your, um, your ship, your Postmates, they're at, a, they're at like kind of your entry level 1099 economy. And then you have your, what we call the semi-pro economy, which we think we fall into, where not anyone, you can't, click a button on handy and have someone come fix your uh, device or install your Nest thermostat. And so we're, we're trying to build this semi-pro economy that, um, that you'd be surprised uh, at how, uh, I mean, 56% of our iTechs have college degrees. The last census, 20, I think 28% of the US population did. So we, we have this like incredible, um, we have incredible technical workforce that is not your regular contractors, and then we layered it once more where we're actually, they're not our contractors, we, we sell them parts and then they chart, take money from their customers. And so, um, so we, we don't deal with, I guess, contractor issues because we're essentially a lead supplier and a part supplier. What's up? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. We're, I'm a getting little over off. time. Um, so if you want to find AJ um, after this. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Told you I could answer the hardball questions. <laughs> but thank you for your talk. Yeah, we're just going to, we have to move on to the next right. speaker. But thanks, All right, guys. I'm out. All right, thank you, guys. <laughs>